What if there was a tool to write emails automatically for me? Oh wait, there's one. Ah, no, my IT department will never let me install it. Oh wait, it's an Outlook. Okay, I think at this point it's obvious this video is a tutorial on Outlook Copilot and that I'm a bad actor. My name is Samuel Boulanger and in this video we'll explore how Copilot can draft and summarize emails for you and even coach you on writing better ones. For more content on how to use AI for productivity, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's dive into Outlook. For this tutorial, I'll use the web version, but you can totally use the desktop or mobile version as well. If you don't see Copilot in Outlook, it's probably because you don't have the proper license. Copilot requires either the Copilot Pro license for personal use or an add-on license for enterprise use. Once you have the proper license, you should also make sure you switch Outlook to the new version, if you're using the desktop version, by simply selecting the toggle button at the top right. Once it's done, you should see the Copilot icon appear in the message tab when creating a new message. This brings us to our first feature, drafting an email with Copilot. To draft a new email, Select the Copilot icon at the top of a new message or click in the message itself and click on Draft with Copilot. You can also type a slash in the email and select Draft with Copilot. Depending on whatever you're using the desktop or online version, you might not see some of these options. But they all bring up the same menu that lets you enter your prompt, so no worries. If you're not sure what a prompt is or how to craft one, uh, I've got you covered with the basics in my last video. Just follow the link in the description. For this example, i would ask it to write an email to my boss to ask for some time off. If I always wanted to go to Tomorrowland, an electronic music festival, and I'm planning to go this year, yeah, I wish. But I have to get my time off approved first. Let's ask Copilot to write an email to my boss asking for a one week off in the last week of July so I can go party. I know it's not well written and will probably get rejected. Thankfully for me, Copilot is here to help. Before I press generate, we will select some important options by clicking on this icon. That's where we'll be able to choose the tone and the length of the email Copilot is going to draft. Let me show you quickly how each tone looks like so you know what to expect. First, in the direct email, phrases like I am writing to request one week of leave and I have made sure to complete all of my outstanding work show a straightforward and to the point approach. The focus is on the request and work continuity, omitting any unnecessary details. The neutral email maintains a balance between formal and informal tones, using phrases like I hope this email finds you well and discussing the work completed as well as personal reasons for the vacation in a matter of fact manner. It presents the request without strong emotional language, aiming for a professional yet personal appeal. The casual email uses an informal tone with phrases like, I boss, I wanted to ask you a favor and mentions attending a party, which personalizes the request. The language is more relaxed, which refers to deserve, deserving a break, indicating a more familiar relationship with the recipient. The formal email is characterized by its professional language, detailed planning, and expressions of gratitude, such as I'm writing to request your approval for a one-week vacation, and I appreciate your support and guidance. It emphasizes achievements, the strategic delegation of tasks, and ensure minimal impact on work, reflecting a high level of professionalism. The poem is a poem. I think it's self-explanatory, but I'm not sure if it will help you get this request approved. Or maybe yes, you can try. Finally, the last one is Sound Like Me, which you might have noticed is not available on the first screen I showed. Because it requires Copilot for M365 and I'm using the Copilot Pro license right now, which is not the same. It basically looks at your previous email and tries to sound like you as in this example. If you want my honest opinion, I don't feel that it sounds like me. Uh, it removed the fluff, formality, and even creativity of the other tones. Or maybe that's just all right, and I'm not good at self-evaluating. Anyway, generally speaking, I think it's pretty good. Not perfect, but good enough to save me a ton of time. I can use any of those as a basis and then refine from there. You can also choose the length. 
While testing with the same prompt and the direct tone, the short version ended up with 62 words and 259 characters, the medium with 140 words and 573 characters, and the long one with 129 words and 568 characters. Surprisingly, after several tests, it appears that the medium and long version both stayed in the same range between 125 and 145 words, so I guess for now we really have only long and medium options. If you want something longer, you can ask Copilot to make it longer after the first generation, which worked in my case by generating a draft of 312 characters. Please note that for now, the Sounds Like Me option only works with the short length. Let's jump to our next feature that lets you improve on an existing output. Let's revisit our last example where I used the Sounds Like Me tone and from this result, ask Copilot to add more details about the event I want to attend. I'll add mention it's because I want to attend Tomorrowland. Simply like that, it added the details, but also mentioned it's a music festival and even mentioned I've always dreamed of going. It really does know me well. From there, you can continue adapting it by using the same function until you get the expected output. You probably noticed Copilot assume a bunch of things, like that all my deadlines were met, that I had arranged to be covered during my absence, and even that I prepared a detailed handover document. It doesn't know me that well, after all. I intentionally didn't provide a lot of context, so we can have an idea of how it sounds without any additional instruction. It's not the best practice. When using Copilot, give it as much context as possible. You can guess where you're going, why you're going, or any other information you didn't provide. Maybe it will in the future, but for now, that's not the case. If you want to learn more about prompting best practice, again, listen to my last video. Our next feature is the summarization feature. When getting involved in a conversation that already has a long thread of emails, it can be a real challenge to read through the whole thread and extract the required information. When opening a thread, you'll notice this button at the top. Summary by Copilot. Simply click on it and it will do the work for you. In this example, there were already five emails sent before I got involved, but no need to reread the entire thread. Here, Copilot is telling me that my colleague has been working on a release schedule for the YouTube channel, that John Doe forwarded the conversations to me to get insight on the plan, and even that John agreed with a suggestion made by Emily and summarized in the line above. Just that were the license, if you ask. Another thing you can do with the drafting feature is to reply to an email. Let's take our thread, click on Draft with Copilot again, and ask it to reply to this email. And provide our guideline like, tell them that the plan looks great and propose to share the video on LinkedIn. Now we have a new draft, but with the details of what has been discussed so far. Copilot takes into account the whole email thread, not just your prompt. Again, I think it's a real time saver. The next feature is the coaching feature. This feature comes in handy when you prefer to write the email yourself, but you will like a bit of help. I'm a good example as my first language is not English and I'm always trying to improve. By using the coaching function, I can ensure that I improve my writing skills and at the same time my speaking skills by learning about etiquette, sentence structure, etc. Let's draft a normal email. Hey boss, I was planning to take the last week of July off to within Tomorrowland. I need your approval. Is that okay? I think we can all agree it's not a really professional email. Let's see what Copilot has to say. First, it tells me I should be more polite, as it's not appropriate for my boss, by using words like could and would. Okay, fair enough. It's true it was a bit direct. Then it suggests considering my boss perspective by asking him what he thinks or how he feels about it. Finally, it advises adding more details like the exact date or the number of days. Honestly, all those suggestions make sense, so let's apply them. So we'll modify it to include how do you feel about it, add would before need, and specify the date. We can then click on Regenerate and Copilot would still have suggestions for us based on the new version of the email. Then it still has points for improvement like being more polite, showing gratitude and giving more details on the event. From there I can continue refining it until I find the email to my taste. 
Copilot will always have some good feedback to give. I think this feature is really useful if you're trying to improve your writing style, but be cautious as Copilot has its own guidelines on what a good email is, which may not align with how you want to sound in a specific situation. The last feature for today, and it's not one that people talk a lot about, but I found incredibly useful is the fact that Copilot supports multiple languages. Why is it important? Because I can ask it, for instance, to generate an email in French, even if my prompt is in English. There you go. Bonjour, j'espère que vous allez bien. Je souhaiterais vous faire part d'une demande de congé que je souhaite prendre. Yes, this is how I sound in my primary language. But that's not all. You can also literally copy paste your email in English and ask it to translate it in the prompt directly. Here, I simply ask to translate this email into French, and then I type my email in English. And just like that, it's translated. I find this powerful because I don't need to use an Outlook add-in or any other tools on the side. It's directly in Outlook where I'm already working. That was the last feature. I hope you learned something new today. For my part, as a full disclaimer, I'm working for Microsoft. But let me share my honest opinion with you. First, I'm using this tool a lot in my role, so I had the chance to test it enough to have a good understanding of its value. It's not perfect yet. As you've seen, it sometimes assume a lot of things, so you must be precise when prompting it. If you take the habit of giving it enough context, I'll say that you'll have 80% of the job done, which is awesome in my opinion. The summary feature is such a time saver. Just this one worth the license, and it works pretty well. The coaching feature, while it has its own guideline, as I mentioned, is a really good tool to make me stop and think when I'm writing. There are still minor glitches like the length issue or the sounds like me that doesn't sound like me, but this technology is still new and will evolve very quickly. I won't be surprised if this review become obsolete in a couple of months as it evolves as lightning speed. So if you ask, is it worth the license cost? It's a big yes. Don't forget that the license includes other Copilot as well, like PowerPoint, Word, and Excel, and access to the latest version of GPT and the capability of creating your own GPT. That's all for today. If you have prompts that you're using with Outlook Copilot that gave you good results, please share them in the comments. I'm always eager to learn new things. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos around AI for productivity. Until next time, if you want to explore other Copilots, you can click on this playlist or watch my last video on PowerPoint Copilot. Thanks for joining me. See ya.